continuing on from the last time, in our personal management system, we've added a button. This will add records that we key in here into our databases table. Let's see how we do that. Well, here's our front end database system from tkinder import star. And then immediately it imports a file called BE backend into the system. It imports this file and runs the file. Let's go over to this file and see what gets run when the system boots up. As soon as the system boots up, it imports BE. What happens in BE? Well, it imports SQLite 3 file, and then it defines this function called connect. The system sees it, but it doesn't execute it. It's a function. It ignores it. Then it runs into another function. It ignores this also. It's just a function definition. It blows right past it. And finally, it comes to a command. Execute the connect function. So it rushes back up here. No, that's the ad rec. Rushes up here. There we go. Here's the connect function. Now the system is going to run this. Now I'm going to knock this down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. I'll put it right back up in a moment. Here's what happens when it executes the connect function. Computer says, Mr. SQLite 3 says, yes. Would you please connect to the emps.database? emps.db. Okay, I'll do it, he says. This guy, emps.db. Would you assign this entire connection to the variable called com? And he says, okay, I'll do that. All right, Mr. Khan, yes. Would you create a cursor? Well, okay, I'll do it. What's a cursor? A cursor is an area in memory into which Mr. Khan is going to put all the records of the database on an as-is-needed basis, and he's going to manipulate them, sort them. This is his scratch pad. And he's going to create this cursor. And he's going to assign this to a variable called cur. All right. Cur is going to be the manager of this cursor. Mr. Cursor. Yes. Would you please execute the following command? He says, all right. What's the command? I want you to create a table. Oh, he says, I got it, I got it. He says, you have an imps database, and there are tables inside of here, maybe. And here's the database, imps.db. And you want me to create a table inside of here. All right, I'll do it. But wait a minute, here's the condition. I want you to create a table only if the table imp does not exist. If not exists, emp. Well, there's the, if there's a table in here called emp, then if, if he's not in there, create him. And if you do create him, he's going to have an integer field called id, and he's going to be the primary key. Oh, that's an important one. And then line continuation character, those guys there. He's also going to have a first name field, which will have text in it, last name field, text in it, department field, text in it, and a salary field, integers in it. Create that. Create that devil if it's not there already. Okay, he says, I'll do that. Then our computer turns to, this, to Mr. Khan and says, Mr. Khan, would you please commit all those changes to the disk? Write those changes to the disk. He says, okay, I'll do that though. So he writes any changes that he made. If that table already exists, then he didn't do anything, and he's got no changes to commit or write to the disk. But if he did make those changes, if he did create the table, he's got to write all of this to the disk. Mr. Khan, yes, would you please close the connection to the emps.database? He says, okay, I'll do that too. And that's what happens in the connect function. That happens every single time you run this program. Now, over here it says, Mr. TK, yes, uh, create a window. 
and assign that to RT. Mr. RT, tell the Windows manager to put something into the title bar. This, specifically. Here's our ed command. Now, this guy, the ed command, is going to call the ed rec function in the BE file here. And he's going to pass him the following data. First name, last name, department, and salary field. This function, add rec, will insert this guy into the database. So the big question is, how does this guy get executed? The add under command function here. Let's go find out. I've scooched on down the screen, and I've come to the buttons section. Now, I tell the system, Mr. Button, he says, yes, I want you to put a button into the RT window. He says, okay, I'll do that. Now the text that's on that button, I want it to say add rec. I want the width of this button to be 10 units long. He says, okay, I'll do that too. This is a line continuation character. I can continue the command on the next line. When somebody clicks on this button that says add rec, I want you to execute this command. So what command is that? The add under command. Well, let's clear off the screen. And one more thing, Mr. B1. Yes, that's the button guy over here. He refers to that button now. Mr. B1, yes. Could you put your silly self into the grid? I want you to position yourself in row zero and column zero. He says, okay, I'll do that. Now let's go back up and take a look at this add under command. This is what the add under command does. Let's say you have some data here. So you have this data in these fields, first name, last name, department, and salary. Go get all the data in the first name field, George. If the length of all this data that you just got from first name field is not equal to zero, that means there's something here. In that case, go and execute the add rec function, which is in the BE file that we imported just a little while ago, directly above this. And I want you to pass the add rec function the following data. Go get everything out of the first name field. Get everything out of the last name field. Get everything out of the department field. And get everything out of the salary field. And pass that over to this guy, add rec, who is in this file here. Go do that. And the system grabs all these guys and heads over to the add rec function in the BE file. Let's go there with them. Here is our add rec function. And as you can see, it's in the BE file, the back end file. You can't see all the commands over here. Let me hit the enter key here and knock this over a bit so you can see it all. I'll put that right back. Now, what happens here? All that data that was passed to add rec is caught here in these fields. First name, last name, department, and salary. Okay, we have all of our data now. Now what do we do? First thing the system does is it says Mr. SQLite 3. He says yeah. Well, Mr. SQLite 3, what I want you to do is connect to the database called imps.db. He says okay, I've just connected to that database. What do you want me to do now? Uh, I want you to assign it all of that connection data all of that information to Mr. Khan. He says, okay, I'll do that. Now I say, Mr. Khan, yes, I want you to create a cursor. A cursor is an area in memory into which the system will place whatever records that it needs at any one particular time uh, for data manipulation purposes. That's its scratch pad. Mr. Khan, make a cursor, and he does it right here. And I want you to assign control and management of that cursor to a variable called C-U-R, Mr. Kerr. Ah, oh, Mr. Kerr, would you do me the honors of executing the following command? He says, what command would you like me to execute? Hmm. Well, I would like you to insert into the, into the table called imp. Now, 
Here's our database. Within the database, we have a table called imp, and that's in the imps database. That's imps, and this guy is imp. He is the table. So, Mr. Cursor, execute the following command. Insert into the imp table the following values. Okay, what values do you want me to put in? Well, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five values. Oh, but this guy over here, don't put anything in there. That means, no, don't you do anything to this guy. Don't worry about that. There's another field in there called ID. You don't put anything in there, the system takes care of that. But these four guys, see the question marks there? Those are placeholders. I want to put something in there. I want to put the first name, data, into this guy. Let me put last name into this guy, department into this guy, and salary into this guy. I would, you like, I would like you to take these guys and insert them into the imp table. Insert those values. Insert those values into the imp table. Okay, he says, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, it's done now. Now what does he do? Then I tell him, confirm that to the user. Print out onto the screen in the background that you just put this in. First name, last name, department, salary. Not the best solution to confirm that you put the data in there, but this is just the second lesson. We're going to improve on this, believe me. And then, Mr. Khan. Yes, I'm over here. I'm listening to you. Would you commit right all that data to the disk and he says okay i'll do that mr khan yes would you do me another favor sure what do you want me to do close the connection to the imps database done and that's it your data is now in the imp table of the imps.db database wow let's run this program and see how it works i'm going to again george Bull. Environment is finances. That's nice. And salary, $500 a week. Wow. Now, when I click on add rec, what's going to happen? Let's find out. Let's move this other screen out of the way. In the background, this was printed out onto the screen. To confirm to the user, that the record was put into the database, but I don't like that. So in the next lesson, we'll take this confirmation data and put that down here. We'll leave out the text and we'll just put in the data, George Bull, Finn, Finances, 500. We'll put that down here as confirmation to the user that the data went into the database. But you say to me, that really isn't enough. I need more. What more do we need? We need to be able to have another button over here that will list all of our records onto the screen here. We need another button like that. So we'll try to do both of those things over the next two lessons. Thanks for listening. And if you would be so kind as to share and like these videos. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.